Yo, what is up, everybody? Today, we're going to recap Super Bowl 50 and open up Super Bowl 50 packs. These packs have 10 gold or better players. As you guys see right there, we get an elite to start off with Mario Williams. It has a Super Bowl patch and a Super Bowl collectible in it. The topper for this thing is a guaranteed Super Bowl legend. So that's going to be very exciting. There's a lot of good players we could potentially get. But um, as far as the Super Bowl itself, Broncos win it. It's Cam Newton versus Peyton Manning, but really, it's Broncos defense versus Panthers defense. It's Vaughn Miller versus Cam Newton. It's Jared Allen versus Peyton Manning. It's Coney Ely, apparently, versus Peyton Manning. Because Coney Ely decided in limited snaps he was going to just go nuts. And Vaughn Miller, in every snap, went nuts. Vaughn Miller forced two very key fumbles in that game. And that was probably two fumbles that could have decided this game. When I'm watching the game, I'm personally thinking the Panthers are still in this game because the Broncos. You know, they can't really score Peyton Manning at quarterback. They're just running the ball. They're playing it very safe, relying on their defense. But it wasn't a bad decision to rely on that defense at all. As you guys see, Malik Jackson, who had a really good Super Bowl. Everyone that Broncos defense line had a really good Super Bowl. Obviously, Von Miller, um, DeMarcus Ware did his thing off the edge whenever they rushed him. And um, Von Miller, Derek Wolf had a good game. Um, Sylvester Williams had a good game. There's so many guys in that defensive line that were just wreaking havoc on poor Cam Newton. Who did? And that's the thing. When you talk about how I'm saying the Panthers are still in the game, the problem is the Panthers have to score a touchdown at some point to stay in this game, and they never did it. They had that one early on, but that was it. And that's why Cam Newton's two fumbles were so key in this game. Cam Newton fumbles and gives up a straight up touchdown. I believe. Um, I remember we recovered that fumble. It might have been Darian Stewart, but um, Von Miller was the one that forced the fumble, and then they cribbed it. And then the second one, they get the ball like the five yard line. Those are ten free points. You can't give that up. And then you talk about special teams. Jordan Norwood returns the ball to like what the five yard line. The Broncos get a feel out of that. Field goal out of that. That's thirteen free points in a game where you're playing against the two like the two best defenses are playing against each other. Thirteen free points. I think that's what decided the game personally, as well as um. You know, Von Miller just straight up, you know, beasting out there. Because the Panthers didn't play. They, I mean, Cam had an okay game. I know people are, you know, crapping on Cam all over the place for leaving media stuff. But let's just talk about the game and, like, not going for fumbles or whatever it might be. But the game itself, Cam didn't play great. Cam was sailing a few passes. But considering what he had to work with, Corey Brown left in the second half of the game, which was really big because he was having a pretty good first half. As you guys see, we get Mike Tolbert. Tolbert had a pretty cramped first half. Dude fumbled the ball twice. He was part of the whole giveaway process where the Panthers just couldn't really take control of the game when it felt like it was there for the taking. Um, Mike Tolbert fumbles it, Gano misses a field goal. Like if that game happens again, the Panthers can easily win it. They're two pretty even teams, judging by the way that Super Bowl went. But um just really most things broke right for the Broncos. The one thing that didn't break right is you guys see we get back-to-back -back Super Bowl elites, which is pretty sick. We get Brock, but I mean, it is a Super Bowl elite that does go for something. It looks like a crap card, but it's worth at least like 50,000. But um yeah, the one thing that the Broncos couldn't do was have Peyton Manning turn the ball over, and he managed to turn the ball over twice anyways. If you think Peyton Manning turns that ball over twice against that Panthers defense, and the way the Panthers are good at, you know, um, scoring off of turnovers, you think the Panthers probably win the game, but they just could never take advantage of it. And the Panthers defense, you know, they did play well. Josh Norman had... Josh Norman catches one of those two picks he drops. Totally different game. Um, obviously, Coney Ely, like I mentioned. Jared Allen had a good game. Charles Johnson had a good game. Both offensive lines weren't really good offensive lines, but the defensive lines were scary out there. But yeah, Peyton Manning really didn't do what he was supposed to do. He turned the ball over twice, but it was enough compared to what his defense did. And that's just the way the Broncos defense played all season long. That is how they played from the jump of the gun. The defense somehow found ways to win games. It, I thought they might be, like, way back on, like, what, week 10 or something when Brock came in as we open up our first Super Bowl topper. Get Ronnie Hillman, who's a pretty good guy. And then we get Steve Atwater, who's not a bad topper out there. Definitely could have been worse. The toppers include guys like Hakeem Nix and Dante Whitner, all right? And those guys are worth, like, half of Steve Atwater's price. It also includes guys like Ray Lewis and... Like Heinz Ward, who are worth double Steve Atwater's price. So it is really a real high high and a real low low when it comes to the Super Bowl topper. By the way, Steve Atwater goes for like, what, 350,000 coins? Pretty cool right there. I don't think we'll use him on our team because we have Sean Taylor. And I'd rather have Sean Taylor since he has the zone defense chemistry. And really, that's about it since they're pretty even cards, as you guys saw on the comparison. But, um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying, but... That's that's basically the topper just as you guys see we get Ted Ginn right there Ted Ginn did not help out Cam Newton at all There was the highs of Ted Ginn. He was making some plays out there He had that one player who was like reversing field trying to pick up pick up a block from Cam Newton And then he had a few drops and one of them led to Cam's interception of the game <laughs> Ted Ginn def not, did not help like I said Corey Brown leaving did not help at all Also known as Philly Brown by the way I think I said Philly Brown in the last video and people were like 
or, um, I said, yeah, I was like, Corey Brown, like, it's Philly Brown, but it's actually Corey Brown. But, yeah, oh, yeah, well, I was talking about the Broncos defense. Broncos defense all season long have won games with their defense. Literally, Peyton Manning's pissing every game away. And, um, <laughs> you get in the keep to lead pick six. You get Chris Harris taking a pick six. You get Vaughn Miller and DeMarcus Ware wrecking havoc off the edge. Whatever it may be, they always made something happen. And it was just really just a flawless defense for throughout the year. They got the first seed, you know, because of their defense. You had that, um, fumble on AJ McCann. Karen that helped them get the first seed along with Peyton Manning coming back in the game against the Chargers and them just disrupting Phillip Rivers and his banged up offensive line making it hard and they went against three really good quarterbacks in the playoffs it's not like they didn't get tested in the playoffs Big Ben no Antonio Brown was still Big Ben who's having a really good year maybe even a career year they don't, you know, they get in Big Ben's head. Tom Brady, they rattled Tom Brady, and that's not easy to do because Tom Brady is playing so well. He played, even played well in the AFC Championship game. He just didn't have enough time. And then Cam, I honestly don't think Cam had a bad game. Like, it looked like, it might look a little bit worse when you look at the stats or whatever, but... You gotta think about the defense he's facing. You gotta think about the pressure he faced all game long. You gotta think about the linebackers, Trevathan and Brandon Marshall, were out there locking up Greg Olson and taking away his favorite target out the game. And then you gotta think about Talib, Bradley Roby, Chris Harris Jr., all playing lockdown. Darian Stewart, who had a really good game and a really good playoffs in general. Darian Stewart was all over the place for a free agent signing. You know, Darian Stewart did his thing, and then, um, you think about what's his face um tj ward who had a pretty good super bowl as well all those guys like that's the all the defensive players who had a bet who is bad on the broncos defense it's nobody you guys see we pulled daryl smith right there so that broncos defense you know it's you know it's kind of like that seahawks defense and that's the next thing i'm thinking about is that you know the broncos lost to that seahawks defense two years ago because of that defense peyton manning was just getting messed up he had the most passing yards in nfl history and just got messed up and basically john elway the gm the essential GM of the Broncos was like, all right, if you can't beat them, join them. Instead of trying to continue making this high-powered offense, he went to free agency and he created a defense. Obviously, you got Von Miller, Chris Harris Jr., guys you drafted, but you signed Tlaib, you signed Demarcus Ware, you signed TJ um, Ward, you signed Darian Store. All these guys, as we open up our second Super Bowl topper and pulled the same guy against Steve Atwater, I was, I was kind of disappointed I pulled Steve Atwater again because. It's a good pull, but I just want someone I can use on my team. I'm really not playing on using Steve Atwater. And then we pull Ronnie Hillman, literally the same exact topper. I don't know what the hell was that. And then we open up a, soup, a second Super Bowl 50 um, bundle because I'm just an idiot and like to, you know, burn money. Well, actually, not, I should say a second. I a second, like, pair of them because they came out with the bundle again on Monday. So, I was like, why not open it again? Why not just burn freaking money? But, um... Yeah, kudos to John Elway for just creating that defense. They really did not miss much in free agency when you think about it. All those names I said were all big name contributors out there, you know? So, um, you guys see we're pulling that Remmers guy a little bit. Remmers was just getting killed by Vaughn Miller out there. That poor soul. We pulled Danny Trevathan in the topper, hoping to pull Heinz Ward. I really, really want Heinz Ward. And we get Vernon Davis, which is not bad because Vernon Davis is someone we can use. And Vernon Davis is someone we can use specifically for the all Broncos team, which I'm going to create sometime by the end of the week once the football outsider comes out cars come out so definitely be on the lookout for that we'll also create an all panthers team and this 95 Luke keekly can definitely help out what a pull right there that keekly is easily going for about 350,000 coins by the time we pulled them um that was last night i opened this pack and oh boy keekly I'll probably sell him and keep the 93 Kiku to be honest because the stats are pretty similar. And once again, I'd rather have that zone defense chemistry. I actually think those zone defense, those damn chemistries actually work. At least the zone defense, I'll have to keep it out there. But, um,. He'll probably sell that 95 Kikui since it's going for so much. But what a pull right there. 95 Kikui. So that's basically all I got to say for this um, Super Bowl. That's all on my mind right now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I know a lot of people thought I was like rooting for the Panthers for some reason. We pulled Matt Forte in this back. We also ended up pulling JPP. People thought I was pulling for the Panthers because the video I put up on Sunday, that Super Bowl matchup video. They were like, Yo, why are you hyping up the Panthers so much? Because I won the game with the Panthers, man. Like, what do you call? Well, if I won the game with the Broncos, I would have hyped up the Broncos. I was just calling the game the way it was. That wasn't my prediction video or anything. So, I mean, that's kind of my bad. I guess I threw people off the wrong way it wasn't a prediction video it was just me playing a game against launchpad which by the way if you haven't checked out the channel definitely check it out man's been doing this thing for a while as we pull cj anderson cj anderson has pretty good playoffs he didn't put up huge numbers but he would fight for the yards man especially with ronnie hillman not playing too well cj anderson you know he did his thing out there he did just enough to help out with the defense they have he did just enough just enough so um this is the last pack but we actually have one more topper to open right here and i'm really hoping we get someone just like sick out the topper because um vernon davis was like the third worst player you can pull out the topper steve atwater is kind of below the pack there's such a great amount of players you can pull out things like ray lewis
Davis. You can pull Derek Brooks. You can pull Ty Law. Yeah, Ty Law. That's the end of the video. Leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed it. Definitely a good pull to end the video. Subscribe for more. Let me, go, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'll catch you guys next time.